Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. And boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. These heavyweights are now starting to starting to get the opportunities, man. Joe Joyce, uh, the guy out of China, Zhang, Hergovic. We already know about Joseph Parker. But um, the unique, I'm going to do a video here on uh, Hergovic and Zhang because that's going to be an interesting matchup. But the thing that I, I didn't realize, because I don't follow a, I don't follow a lot of amateur boxing. You know, when Shu Shu was out there fighting, you know, I followed him because he just know his name and watching him, uh, watching his videos and him being a, a YouTube uh, kind of phenomenon since he was a kid. So when you hear he's out there, man, and doing his thing as an amateur in the Olympics, um, and see he's turning pro and looking wonderful, you know, I'm familiar with those names. But like Joe Joyce and Flip Hergovic, I had no idea that these guys had fought before. You know, they both have some things in common as far as being, you know, bronze medalists. Um, but I was surprised to find that out because I've always thought that the two of them have very similar styles. So I went back and watched the fight where these two fought. And, and, and let me tell you, Hergovic now has a style more of just plodding along and letting big shots go. But as an amateur, because they have to let their hands go because it's point based. Um, he was definitely a boxer with speed, with skill, and Joe Joyce too did a lot of amazing things. But it's, it's, a, it's amazing to see how styles change as these guys evolve from amateurs to professionals. And it's like a night and day difference, like a huge contrast from how they fought as amateurs to professionals. And they both turned into high volume boxer punchers, more on the puncher side. And they're very, very similar in their styles. That's why when they um, fought as amateurs, it went to a split decision and Joe Joyce won. But Hergovic could have easily won. And this is why a lot of people, one, Joe Joyce struggled, struggling, struggling to get a fight, and Hergovic struggling to get a fight. Because remember, Luis Ortiz came out and said to all the heavyweights, if nobody will fight him, that means they're wearing panties. Hergovic's like, hey, I'll fight you. And Luis Ortiz didn't want nothing to do with it. And I'm t there's a reason for it. Because Hergovic, Hergovic is the real deal. He can box, he's slick, he's super powerful, and he's huge. Another one of those six five, six six, six seven guys. Joe Joyce, another one of those six six, six seven guys. Extremely powerful, extremely athletic. They don't box and dance around the ring anymore because they don't have to. They have a style, which is come forward, mash up, crash up. Joe Joyce will take three, four shots to let his one go. And he brags about his chin and having a good chin. Hergovic um, is a guy who he will take, he will get hit a lot too, but I, he doesn't strike me as the fighter who wants to get hit to, to let one go. He's just on a seek and destroy mission, and and he's got he has a lot of power. But when you when you look at the the landscape of the heavyweight division, what I think is going to happen is, you see, it's always nice to have a story. It's always nice to have a, an angle when you're trying to match make. And when you look at Joe Joyce and Hergovic, it's very similar to Vernon Ford, Shane Mosley. They fought one loss as amateurs. Um, and what's going on right now with Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall, they fought one of them lost. And with these guys, they fought both medal in the Olympics with bronze, but somebody lost. And it was a split decision. So when you when you look at matchmaking going on right now, they two both of them have big fights ahead of them. Parker, I mean uh, Joe Joyce finally gets a chance to fight Joseph Joseph Parker. Just nobody wanted to fight Joe Joyce. Okay? Nobody wanted to fight him. Because if you watch what happened with him and Daniel Dubois, people were expecting Dubois to clip him. And that's not what happened. So 
if, if you can't if you can't hurt Joe Joyce and you can't make him second think anything, he's gonna keep coming forward. And he has an incredible jab. And that's how, how he was able to shut down the ball is that the reach and that jab, and he has heavy hands. And with him going to the fight with Parker, I pers- I think Parker loses that fight. I don't think Parker's not gonna be able to 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 to, to hurt. Uh, Joe Joyce. I think he's gonna learn after like that first round that he he's in there with a huge problem, and Parker's gonna do a lot of dancing and moving around, and he's gonna get behind on the rounds, and he's either gonna lose by decision because Parker's not one to take a lot of risk, in, and especially uh, risking getting knocked out. He's gonna take a lot. Uh, he's gonna he's not gonna take a lot of risk. He's gonna get behind the scorecards, and I think he's gonna lose on decision. But if he chooses to exchange with Joyce, I think that he definitely gets knocked out. This would be a time when we see jo- Joseph Parker get knocked out, because Joe Joyce is 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 with his work rate, his heavy hands, and that jab alone, he will eventually stop Parker. Whether it's from just too much wear and tear, or, or uh, damage being taken, or he actually clips him with a hard shot and the referee jumps in, that's what I think can happen. Joe Joyce and the jab, it's just hard when these guys are fighting. Guy with six, 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 seven, 80, 80 inch reach. You know, it's just hard. And then Joe Joyce is bread and butter. It's his jab and right hand. Now, if you watch Joe Joyce as an amateur, he'll throw the combination to the head, go to the body, you know, use angles. Joe Joyce can box. He doesn't have the fastest hands, but he has, uh, he, he knows that straight lines. You want to get some from point A to point B? Straight line. Fastest means, fastest means of travel. Not going around the long way. Straight lines. And that's what he throws. Now, when he starts getting you hurt, he may let a few shots go that kind of a bit wide. But that's okay. Once you get someone hurt, it's about getting them out of there. So you do whatever is necessary. And I'm talking about Joe Joyce right now. And I'm speaking highly of him. But almost everything I just said about Joe Joyce applies to flip her of it. Everything I just said. The only difference between the two of them, I really think, is Joe Joyce is not Joe Joyce is willing to take shots to get one off. And knows he has a good chin and he depends on that, which is okay, it's cool when you, it's like being a young guy in the gym and you wanna bench three hundred and fifteen pounds, four or five, you know, incline, two ninety five, three fifteen. When you're young, that's cool, but there's always that old head that will come over to you. I remember when we were young, the old head will come over and tell us, hey, that's that's stupid to lift all that weight. You know, and we were like, man, get your old ass out of here. But now that I, here I am now, man, you know, a seasoned vet in the game. <laughs> and after surgeries on both shoulders and everything, you know, that guy was right. It's not cool to just get take unnecessary damage although it may make you feel a kind of way. And with Joe Joyce, the same thing. Him taking all those shots to get his one or two off is like, you know, us as young guys lifting all that heavy weight just to, you know, feel good about ourselves or win a few powerlifting trophies or, you know, walk around and your wife beat it and your body looking nice. But really, we should have been looking for more stream, streamlined physiques and lighter weight. And that's actually what I used to do when I used to, uh, when I was boxing. I, I would cut off, cut out the weights, man. And I just think the, the wear and tear of my body from boxing and weightlifting, that just really hurt me, especially my shoulders, man. And, and when you look at Joe Joyce, I just think that's unnecessary wear and tear he's taking by taking those shots to get one off. The thing about Hergovic, he's not like that. Now, he'll take a shot and he'll keep fighting, but he's not trying, he's not depending on his chin for him to win a fight. And I think that's a big difference between the two. That being said, if if they were to fight, which I'm not sure that fight's going to happen anytime soon. And the reason I say that, because I've already mentioned that uh, Joe Joyce is fighting Parker. I think Joe Joyce is going to win. No problem. That's what I think. But Flip Hergovic's about to fight that big Chinese heavyweight, Zhang. And I don't know if you guys seen how this guy is built, seen his legs. He is a monster, man. And he can box. That guy, yo, he can fight. That joker can fight. He hits hard. 
And I think I think Zhang is gonna knock Hergovic out. And I say out, I mean out cold. I think Zhang is, I think is a vicious knockout. It's gonna be horrible. They're gonna have to get the paramedics in the ring. Because you know, that guy Zhang, I see that man throw a check hook, then the straight left hand. He's southpaw. Problem. I'm telling you. Problem. He's He's not the fastest, just like none of these guys. They don't have super quick hands. But if you watch them in the amateurs, their hands are super. Their hands are pretty fast. But as as pros, they evolve and they change their styles. I wonder why they just don't let their hands go, you know, as much. But I understand the point system. But as a pro, the, as amateurs, these guys have pretty quick hands. You watch their video; they're pretty fast. But the the one the the problem in the heavyweight division this the the the, the Chinese heavyweight Zhang. I think he is going to be a huge problem. That he can crack and he can box and he's a southpaw. And he's massive, man. So when the dust settles, I'm about to do a video on him. When the dust settles, I think Joe Joyce is gonna rise to the rise to the top. I think he and Zhang are the next. Flip Hergovic, he's going to make some noise, but he's going to have some losses on his record. You know, um, you know there, there are guys like even Michael Hunter. Like, nobody wants to fight Hergovic. There's a reason. Hergovic is out here just destroying people. He's just destroying people. You know, guys that then get intimidated because when he does, when they do hit him, they don't, they don't, it doesn't hurt him. It doesn't stop him. He's like a, a machine. But Hergovic's about to run into... Another another machine, and this I think this machine just be maybe a manufacturer out of materials that's more durable than what he's what he's created created out of. And I think I think Hergovic is about to take a loss. And I think when the dust settles, uh, Hergovic and, uh, and and Joe Joyce maybe some years down the road, but I don't think it'll happen soon. I think it'll be Zhang and Joe Joyce getting it on at some point. Cause see, it's all eliminators now. So these guys are fighting for IBF, you know, IBF eliminators and stuff like that. So someone will be in line to fight AJ. But, you know, and they get all excited because, yeah, I won my eliminator. I'm the mandatory. You know, it'll be a Dylan White story, man. It, these guys aren't going to go out there and fight AJ. And, you know, they're going to make sure AJ, if he beats Yusick, well, let me put it here, whoever wins out of AJ and Yusick, you know, Yusick are probably... They're both, AJ and Yusuf are going to look to fight Fury. That's what's going to happen. So these guys are going to get paid step-aside money. And that gets expensive. Who would want to give Hergovic, uh, you know, someone who's not really well-known, but who would want to give him $2 million for him to step aside? Who would want to give Joe Joyce $2 million? You know, so I think they'd rather fight them, uh, feeling they can get them out the way and go on to bigger and better things. I think Hergovic is the easiest fight of the two. But but I'm not saying that in a disrespectful way. Hergovic is an animal. I just I just don't think that Her Hergovic is um, I don't think Hergovic edges out Jean or Joe Joyce. I think Joe Joyce edges him out, but I think I think I think Jean and Joe Joyce is extre an extremely tough fight. Because, let me tell you, Zhang has boxing skill. Check hook, slip the shot, counter. The stuff that he's doing in the ring, now true with the, the level of opposition, that makes a big difference. But I have a feeling Zhang beats both of these guys. I really do. I think he's going to clip Hergovic. Then we'll see Zhang, you know, mandatory for, you know, IVF or whatever. Um, and he probably have to get paid step aside money because they're not going to want to fight him. They're going to fight Fury, and or he's not going to get get paid step aside money. There's going to be you know some agreement for Usyk or Fury to fight uh, Usyk and Fury to fight or AJ and Fury to fight, and then you're going to see whoever wins out of Zhang and Hergovic for them to fight the winner of Parker and um, and Joyce, and if that happens. Now, if Hergovic wins for some reason, I think Joe Joyce beats him.
But but I just don't think her gonna be getting beyond Zhang. I, I, Zhang, I don't see that happening. But if Zhang wins, he fights Joyce. Zhang will beat Joyce, in my opinion, and then Zhang will go on, and now we have an extremely, extremely unique uh, matchup and a heavyweight from China fighting for the undis. Well, it'll be the unified heavyweight championship. That is a fight that can be marketed well. They can host that fight in China. They can probably pull in big money for that fight. And don't be surprised if guys are already mapping this stuff out and that's what happens. So that's my prediction. And I may be wrong. My prediction is Jean Clips Hergovic, then Parker, uh, uh, Joyce Clips Parker. So, so Jean will clip Hergovic. Joyce will clip, clip Parker. AJ or Yusuf will fight, and the winner of that will fight Fury. While they're fighting, Jean and Joyce will have to stay busy. They'll both be mandatories. They'll have to fight each other. Jean clips Joyce, and then Jean goes on to fight the winner of Fury Yusuf. If Fury wins, then everything goes up in the air because if Fury fights Yusuf and he beats Yusuf, he's going, he's definitely punching out. He's done. He's like, box check, I fought for the undisputed distinction. Here you go, boys, here are the belts. And then you, you probably have everybody fighting for all the belts. And you'll have, you know, four or five different champions out there again. And then it'll take forever to get uh, back to a belts being unified and, and a distinction for undisputed. So that's my prediction. That's my thoughts. But Joe Joyce and Hergovic, they have history. They fought, they fought as amateurs. Joyce beat them. Uh, but it was a close fight. But you look at their styles now, they're very similar, very similar in the way, the way they go about fighting. I just think for, for, for the matchup right now, I think Hergovic is, is matched up a lot tougher than Joe Joyce is. The fact that Joyce is fighting Parker and Hergovic's fighting the Chinese heavyweight, that's, a, 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 that's, that's like a suicide mission in my, my opinion. But we'll see how it plays out. But that being said, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Uh, both of these guys have big fights coming up. Finally have big names. Nobody wanted to fight them. Not even Luis Ortiz wanted to get in there with these guys. So it is what it is at this point. And um, we'll see how, how, things, how, the, how the cards fall. So like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Shout out to all the veterans. And I'm in the brief.